Hey everybody, welcome back. I must admit that five years ago, if you were to tell me that I'm gonna install a drivetrain and not worry about cables, I would have called you crazy. Here we are today, we have the GX Eagle Axis. Let's get this installed. And no cables, but we have to worry about batteries this time. The tiny battery that comes with it, mine was dead, so make sure you use that uh, charger to charge it up. Controller already has a battery installed. If you press on the button, you get a green light. Green is good, so that's fine. Next, you have to install an actual battery here on the derailleur. And to remove this battery cover, the easiest way that I found to do it is reach out here on the inside, and as you unclip it from the inside, it comes right off. There's only one way you can install this battery, and that's like this. And again, if you press that, access button here we go it just blinked green and you heard the motor initializing so these are ready to be paired a process that connects one controller with one derailleur so they can work together now the pairing process is described here on this quick start guide and i'm sure everybody reads the quick start guide right three easy steps and step number one says press and hold this access button on the derailleur until you see that LED blinking, okay? And you see it green right now, and now it's blinking. Now move over to the controller, press and hold again until you see this LED blinking. Now it's blinking fast, and now we go back here, and you press on that button one more time, and that should connect the two together. So now, let's go. Yeah, it works! And now we're ready to install this toy. Did I say toy? On to an actual bike. And back in the lab where I'm working on my other toy, the Santa Cruz that I showed you guys recently on my channel. Obviously the first step is going to be to install the shifter. Interestingly, this is a new bar clamp with two bolts on it versus the old SRAM bar clamp that used to come with older shifters. And here's the controller installed with the old bar clamp. However, if you look at the new bar clamp, this has like an integrated spacer, like a five millimeter spacer. So your shifter would be pushed down. I assume that has to do with ergonomics. So I'll see how that goes when I have the uh, grip installed. And like with any shifter, I would say shift in the hardest gear. This is this up button. There we go. So I bring the cage all the way back. And surprise, surprise, we're gonna make it a Shimano install. So Shimano cassette chain and cranks with the SRAM Axis GX. This should work just fine. Give us that smoothness of the HG Plus with the magic of the wireless shifting. Five millimeter hex, and again, it's gonna be B-bolt, tab, and the derailleur hanger stop. That's the sequence. Push the derailleur down to keep that tab and the stop in contact and tighten this to 11 newton meters. Back in the good old days of mechanical derailleurs, at this point I would have said let's adjust those limit screws, but in this case uh, this is done at the very end, so let's install the chain now. SRAM and Shimano talk about chain length differently, but they both recommend to put the chain on the largest cog and on the largest chain ring. Don't run it through the derailleur, and then you're gonna have end-to-end -end plus a few links. In my case, I use the Shimano method, so end-to-end -end plus five links. That's because my suspension is not in the sack position or fully deflated shock position, and I did end up pretty much with what SRAM recommended if deflating the suspension fully. Use the magic of that cage lock and run the chain through the derailleur first. Remember, the Shimano chain is directional, so you gotta see Shimano written over there. Remember, you have a tab over here, you gotta be below it. And onto your chain ring. The Shimano quick link is directional. You see the arrow and the direction of the movement of the chain. In case of SRAM, you would have that kidney shaped looking like this. So just connect the two parts of the quick link. I'm gonna release the cage now. And then you can use chain pliers to properly connect the quick link or just move that quick link up top and then go and yank on the cranks. There you go. 
and this is going to be your first glimpse of whether the chain is the right size as you can see here i still have room to play with my cage and also my b gap is not adjusted yet that's going to be the next step so first revolutions of this shramano drivetrain start shifting up the cassette one by one all the way to here because that's where SRAM recommends to adjust the B-gap. B-bolt is there, you have a three millimeter Allen and this derailleur comes with the new adjustment tool. The problem is that trying to use it with this Shimano cassette, it doesn't really work because as you can see, this second largest cog is too close to the 51. So you cannot really sit the tool properly. I actually have a video on my channel looking at the new tool, the three millimeter hack and the old tool. Make sure you check that out. But in this case, I'm gonna try to use the old tool. So chain in the largest cog, put a tool behind the top jockey and take a look at that line. Go ahead and adjust until the top of the 51 aligns with your line here. If you don't have the old tool, use a ruler to measure about 40, 41 millimeters from the cassette to the bolt of that top jockey. And remember that this adjustment has to be made at the sag point of the bike. So I'm gonna have to do this again with my weight on it. So with the 11 shifts being hard coded into the mechanism here, how do we fine tune this so you don't hear noises like this? This was called indexing in the good old days and it was done by using the barrel adjuster at the shifter. That is now called micro adjust and is done by pressing onto the access button and then using the paddle up or down. This will micro adjust the derailleur in the direction that you wish. So press and hold and you would see the LED here blinking as you do this. These are micro adjustments, so you're not necessarily gonna see the 0.2 millimeter movement of the derailleur cage. SRAM recommends doing the micro adjust with the chain on the second largest cog, and you can do that, but just keep in mind that you want the derailleur to be perfect for the middle of the cassette. There is a 1.1 millimeter delta between a SRAM cassette and a Shimano cassette. You want that difference to be spread half and half on the two halves of the cassette. I want you guys to think about this micro adjust as being nothing else but the job done by the high limit screw in the good old days. And that is to tell the derailleur where the first gear is and then the 11 clicks of this cassette will start from there. This is no different. Using the micro adjust, you set up that first gear and then the derailleur mechanism is set up for the exact 11 clicks that the SRAM cassette needs for perfect shifting again and again. And that's what the Axis drivetrain is known for. And we're almost done, but we have to look at the limit screws that used to be so important in adjusting these drivetrains. I'm convinced that SRAM is using a stepper motor in there. So these two screws now are only used for safety. We're gonna use a three millimeter to do so. And with the chain in the largest cog, we're gonna adjust the low limit screw first. The idea is to bring this close to start with and stop when that top jockey starts moving, bring it back and then counterclockwise another quarter turn. Repeat that for the high limit screw. And remember, you don't want the stepper motor and the gearbox in here to fight this limit. You want this to be just offside of that last step as a safety measure. And folks, I do realize this is a bit unorthodox way of installing SRAM access, but don't be fooled. If you have a full SRAM drivetrain, the only difference is gonna be using the new B-gap tool versus what I've used, which is the old B-gap tool. But the million dollar question is, will this work? So here it is, I have the B-gap optimized for the bike stand, not the sack point, just for the sake of this demo. One step at a time to the largest cog. Not bad at all. And I know you guys are gonna ask me about backpedaling on the 51, and I can tell you that even with this oval, there is no issue whatsoever. I can backpedal as much as I want. The chain is not gonna drop. This bike has a 430 millimeter chain stay right now, and this is a 52 millimeter chain line for boost spacing. 
Back down to the smallest cog. If anything, this is going to be a bit louder than a normal Shimano setup. Okay, now multiple at a time, a couple at a time. And back down. So not bad at all. Are you guys surprised by this? I am not since I've been mixing Shimano and SRAM for the last couple of years. But uh, obviously I'm gonna have to take this to the slopes before I can give you a final verdict. And I do know you're gonna say, but, 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 but what about the apps? What about my Access app? And yes, SRAM has something like that and it has to be set up. I recommend using it, but for now, this is all we need to know in regards to installing SRAM Access GX. Was this useful? I hope it was. And it looks like I'm going to have to do a follow-up video in which I talk about my experience on the trail and also if I learned any other tips and tricks using the app or any other gizmos around this. So that's the end of my video, folks. Hope to see you on the trails riding SRAM Access. See you next time. Cheers.